And uh, I'd like to read these verses of Scripture here this evening and uh, deliver a little thought that's on my heart to you. I'm, I'm ha i got a burden on my heart tonight, heavy. And I'm going to try to uh, give it to you and, and ask you to help me with it. Psalm 142 and verse number 1. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before Him. I showed before Him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then Thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I have walked, have they, lay, have they privily laid a snare for me? I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about. But thou shalt deal bountifully with me. You'll look back at the bottom of verse number 4 again, where he said, Refuge, fail me. David got in this position where he said, No man cared for my soul. Now, I want to preach tonight on, Does anybody care? People everywhere tonight are in this world that we live in thinking nobody cares. There are teenage girls and boys in this county tonight, this evening. They're in a drug house somewhere, been left, been slapped around last night, beat, treated terrible, and they're laying there maybe with a bottle of pills like this saying, who cares? Nobody cares about me. There are tonight in VA hospitals around this country, men laying there with missing arms and legs and never have had a life since the war in Vietnam or maybe the Iraq war, never have had a better life, never will in this life. Some of them, their family never comes to visit them. They lay there all the time. That's their life. And they say, who cares? Nobody cares about me. And I know for a fact there are elderly people in rest homes all over this country, a lot around here, that lay there day after day after day after day after day, and not one person ever steps in their room except the nurse to feed them, and she's getting paid to do that. They lay there and think, nobody cares. Who cares about me? The wife that's in that apartment tonight or that complex or that trailer park whose husband is who knows where. She don't know where he is, what he's doing, who he's with, when he'll come home, where his paycheck went, what he's doing. And sometimes she'll sit down and say, ain't nobody cares. Who cares? I want to try to answer that question from the Bible tonight, and I want to bring you the thought about it. Number one, I want to say this this evening, the Father cared enough to love you. The Father cared enough to love you. The, the greatest verse in the Bible, John 3.16, says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. God so loved. You know, you say uh, that God so loved the world. And you can put your name in there. God so loved Brother Danny. God so loved, put your name that He gave His only begotten Son, that if I would believe on Him, I would not perish. I'll tell you one thing tonight. God cares about you. He cared about me. Don't you ever let the devil tell you that nobody cares. The Father cared about you. If you was the only person in the world, if you had nothing more to give or to bring, he still loved you enough to care about your soul. The Father, and before the foundation of the world, before man ever sinned, back in the Garden of Eden, it was in the mind of God a plan of redemption and a plan of salvation. Uh, before the, uh, that's why the Bible said in his mind that the Lamb, Jesus, was slain 
from the foundation of the world. It didn't happen until 2,000 years ago. But God already knew it and God already planned it before me and you was ever born in this world that He cared about you. Don't you ever think nobody cares. God cares. God cares about you and showed that He cares. Listen, if you didn't have nothing more of the Bible but John 3, 16, you ought to have something to shout about forever and ever and ever. There's a little preacher shot up one time, and he said, The Lord's my shepherd. And somebody said, uh, Is that all? And he looked back and he said, Is that all? That's enough. If the Lord's my shepherd... That's enough. I got somebody that loves me. I got somebody that takes care of me. I got somebody that watches over me. I got somebody that's concerned about my feelings, about my, my as he said, in the midnight hour when you're hanging by a thread. Thank God somebody cared. Somebody cared. I'm glad that God the Father cared. But I want to say secondly tonight, Jesus Christ cared enough to lay down his life. He said, uh, A greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Don't you ever say, Nobody cares about me. Ain't nobody never done nothing for me. I'll tell you somebody done something for you. Jesus Christ laid down his life for you. That's good news. Hallelujah. I don't care, brother. You may not you may not be the most popular kid in school. They may make fun of you because you don't have things like they have. You may be the poorest person on the block. You may be uh, like that in this world. I'm telling you, there was somebody loved you enough to let them beat nails through his hand, through his feet, let them slap him, beat him, cuss him, uh, rip his flesh down his back, and beat a crown of thorns down in there, blood run down him, slapped his face, and tell him to a cross. And and he could have stopped it. He could have called 10,000 angels and said, get me down. But you know what he done? He said, I love that boy, that girl right there at Shining Light Baptist Church, and I'm going to do this for them. I will tell you tonight, Jesus cared about you. He cared about you tonight, young people. He cared about you, mamas and daddies. I'm telling you, he cared enough to leave heaven. Can you imagine leaving heaven to come down here into this mess? There's a lot of people say, well, I don't want to die. I love my life. Listen, if you could go to heaven for 10, for 10 minutes, you would never want to come back here again. Um, whatever you like down here, you multiply it a million times up there, plugged into 220. I mean, all of the time, perfect satisfaction, perfect peace, perfect food, perfect atmosphere, perfect weather. You say, well, they got they stuff that I like they don't have up there. Well, you, you, better, you better get make some do some changing up, uh, fixing up. Uh, but I'm telling you one thing, brother, you'll like it up there. You'll like it up there. And Jesus left heaven and came down here to show he cared for you and took on a body like sinful flesh. It wasn't sinful, but it was like us and walked 33 and a half years in a man's shoe. See, for years people said, well, God, you don't know what it's like. You make all them rules. Uh, you don't have to live down here. Like He said, all right, I'll become a man. He comes down here, walks 33 and a half years, never raised his hand when he shouldn't have, never spoke a word he shouldn't have, never took a step he shouldn't have, lived perfect for 33 and a half years to show you that he cared. He left heaven where there was no sorrow, no death, and he gave his life. He left his, laid down his life for you. He prayed for them that killed him. When he was dying on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Don't tell me nobody cares for you. Don't tell me that people don't care about you. I, he is the door. He's the shepherd. He's the door of the sheepfold. As a matter of fact, he is the door. He don't go in the door. He is the door. They said one time this man had a great big flock of sheep. And at night, what they do, they let them sheep go out there and graze in them fields. And at night, the shepherd will blow that horn and eat or whatever. And all them sheep come into that fold and they come through a gate. And he comes through a gate right there. And somebody watched them one time they said, that's amazing. All them sheep would come and go right through that gate and go in there. And they said, all right, they're in for the night. Hey, he said, I, I don't have to worry about it. And somebody said, well, where's the door? Where's the door? You don't have a door. And the shepherd said, I am the door. And he laid down there with his staff, and he said, I'm right here at the door. The sheep can't get out, and the wolf can't get in. He said, I am the door. I rod and my staff is right here. And brother, he, Jesus said that one time. He said, I 
am the door. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight... Jesus Christ cares about you. Young people, you remember when you go to school and you get your heart broke, your boyfriend breaks up with you and, you and things don't go right and your family disowns you and people laugh at you and make fun of you. We've all had that done to us. We've all been laughed out. We've all been made fun of. Let me tell you tonight, Jesus cares about you. He cares. Oh, yes, He cares. I know He cares. Thank God Jesus cared enough to lay down His life. Number three, the Holy Spirit cared enough to convict you. The Holy Spirit cared enough to call you, to convict you, and to convert you. I'm glad, hallelujah, He called me. You wouldn't be saved tonight if the Holy Spirit of God had not called on you. I'm glad for that night up yonder in Nebo Baptist Church. I didn't deserve it. Listen, if I'd have been God, I wouldn't have come nowhere near me. But the Holy Spirit came right there where I was. I couldn't go to where He was, but He come to where I was. And He come to me and said, Danny, I'll save you if you'll come. I'm glad the Holy Spirit cared enough about me to care and come and invite me and convict me and call me and convert me. I'm telling you tonight, folks, the Holy Spirit is God and He cares enough to convict you. You ought to thank God for that. Somebody cares. Somebody care. I'll never forget that night. Never, ever, ever, long as I live, when he come to me and convicted me. Number four. Number four, the church cares enough about you to pay the bills to keep this thing going for you. The church cares about you. Don't you ever say nobody cares. The church cares about you. The church cares enough, brother, to make it comfortable. You know, uh, there's, there's no command in the Scripture that we have to have a building like this. And in the New Testament, they met in houses. And if we wanted to, uh, me and my family, we could all meet at my house on Sunday and have church and sing. And I'd play the guitar and we'd sing Worship God and get in the Bible a little bit. And we could all do that if we wanted to and still go to heaven. Uh, we're saved, we belong to God. But you know what? We got together as a group and we said we, we care about other people. You can't, you can't have a church that ain't got nowhere to bring them. So we got a building. We're buying this building. We are paying on it every month. People put their hard-earned money and our tithes. That already belongs to God. But we give money above and beyond that. You know why? Because the church cares about you. You know why we're having Bible school? Because the church cares about our kids here in this building this season. I'm telling you, don't you ever sit at home and let the devil tell you, well, ain't nobody cares about me. I'm just pitiful and all that. You jump up and say, hallelujah, shining light Baptist church cares about me. I have to put on a three-night Bible school and tell my boys and girls, we ain't getting paid extra for this. I mean, we don't, we don't get money out. I mean, I don't get paid to preach. I get paid to pastor and put up with your junk. I preach for the Lord and do what God wants me to do. Amen. I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, the church cares about you. It's the church that comes to you when you're sick. It's the church that brings groceries to your house when the, when the house burns down and you can't pay your light bill and you're having surgery. It's the church that fasts and does without food and honors God so your kids can get saved. That's a youth rally. Church cares about you. I get sick and tired. Matter of fact, I get mad. If you want to get me mad, you just start running your mouth about the church. I know we ain't perfect, and I know we got a long way to go. i tell you one thing, brother. This church is standing between your, your kids and your family and hellfire. The church cares about you. Church cares about you. People get up every Saturday morning, go knock on doors in the rain, in the ice, in hot weather, in cold weather, in weather that's terrible, in beautiful weather when everybody else is going on a picnic. And you know why? Because they care about your soul. I believe in the bus ministry. That's why we run it. You know why I run buses? You know why I raise money to buy buses? And you know why I fast? And we, I preach to y'all to keep buses running? Because in my heart, I think that could be me out there in that trailer park. That could be one of my grandkids out there in that apartment building with no food and mama's on crack and daddy's on, on drugs and they're gone. That could be me. That could be you. I'm telling you, our church cares about little boys and little girls. 
Our church cares about drunks. Our church cares about the people that stand on the side of the road at Walmart with a little saints. I wouldn't give them people time of day. Well, you need to get your heart right with God, friend. I'm not telling you you should give them all money because some of them crook, but I'm telling you one thing, you ought to care about them. I'll stop and give them a dollar and then witness to them, give them a track, and tell them about Jesus Christ. You know why? Because that could be my daddy out there. And it is somebody's daddy or somebody's mother. Me and somebody, who was it the other day? Who was with me? When well, there was a lady out there and we stopped and talked. I don't even know. Was, was that on bus route? Was it you, Wes? Some, Mike? Somebody? Somebody was with me the other day and we, was out, and we was out there the other day and a lady's sitting there and I said, Ma'am, you all right? She said, I'm just having a hard time. And you could tell this lady wasn't on drugs. She was seriously having a hard time. And I gave her some money. You say, Ah, oh, you're crazy, preacher. No, I think the Lord looks down and says, I'm glad you care. And if somebody does misuse it, I still get the blessing. Do you know if you give money to a missionary and a missionary misuses it, God will still bless you just like he took it and done right with it? The church cares. Don't use that. Don't use the excuse that some people's a crook as an excuse not to do nothing for God. Amen? The church cares. The church cares. We, we care enough to spend $20,000 a year running them buses. We care enough, brother, to get up at 7.30 in the morning and crank that old bus up and head down the road uh, to get boys and girls. We care enough uh, to get together and say, hey, let's raise some money and buy, and then guys buy pizza for, for the bus kids. We care enough. Uh, John and Wes, them out there working on them buses this week. We care enough that they'll get up early and run them and run them and get it home on 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. I'm telling you, the church cares about you. Give millions of dollars, churches do around this country, to missionaries. Handing out millions and millions of gospel tracts. The church is cussed and mocked on TV. Christians are laughed at. But I'm telling you something, buddy. You talk about bad when the church is gone. Son, this old world's going to be in bad shape. He said, if they've done these things in a green tree... What are they going to do when it gets dry? It's going to be bad. I'm telling you, somebody said, oh, you're a bunch of nuts. I like what old Ruckman told him. He said, listen, when us nuts are gone, you squirrels are going to have a time with it. That's right. You better thank God for the church. You better thank God for the church. Number five, people in heaven care about you. Excuse me. I preached this morning in Hebrews 12:1. Seeing we're compassed about with a great cloud of witness. I can't prove that, but I sure do want to believe that the people in heaven care about your soul. Amen? They care about you. Seeing we're compassed about, like the old song says, it made news in heaven when I got saved. I believe tonight there's grandmas in heaven and somebody gets saved down here and the Lord get over there and say, guess what, grandma? You know that nephew you prayed for? You know that grandkid you prayed for? Well, guess what? That some old preacher preached a while ago and they got in this morning. Your prayers have been answered and grandma shouts all over heaven. I'm telling you tonight, folks, the people in heaven care about you. Number six, the people in hell care about you. People in hell care about you. You say, no, they don't, preacher. They don't care about nothing. In Luke chapter 16, the Bible said the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, and he saw Abraham over yonder and Lazarus in his bosom, and he said, Father, Father, send Lazarus over here that he can tip tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. That's what happens to people that are not saved. They're in fire. They're in flames. And if you believe that, it'll it'll do something to the way you think. People believe certain things or don't believe certain things and it comes out in your life. You believe things, it'll, it'll make a difference in your life. If you really believe people burn in hell when they die, it will make a difference in how you, your philosophy of life and how you approach things and how you look at things. And this guy said, I'm tormented. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. You ain't never been dead. You don't know what's over there. And your little smart 
Catholic professor at school ain't never been dead. And the scientists that try to tell you there ain't no God ain't never been dead. But Jesus Christ said the man was begging for a drop of water on his tongue, people. And he said, send him over here. And they said, we can't do that. Nobody over here can't go over there. Nobody over there can't come over here. And you know what the man said? He said, Father, listen, he said, Father, I've got five brethren at my father's house. There ever one coming here. Send somebody to my father's house. Put it on somebody's heart. Let there be a bus worker. Let there be a soul winner. Go to my daddy's house. I've got five brethren. I don't want them to come here. I don't want them to come here. It's a terrible price. The people in hell care about you. Amen. Amen. Lastly, and I'm through. How much do you care? How much do you care? You care enough to get your heart right with God? You care enough? You care enough to do something for God? All the bus workers here tonight, I think we got four out of five of our captains here this evening. Can I, can I unload my burden on you tonight? My heart broke this morning. See, those buses so low, I can't, it broke my heart. Listen, I... I, I, I got a burden. I care about them kids. Will somebody else care, please? Will the rest of you people, how about a burden for sin? How much do you care? I mean, God's been good to us. Some of you people are so smart and talented and know the Bible, you could fill a bus up in three weeks and you, and you don't care. You don't care. I ain't committing my heart. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Who do you care? Do you care about them? Well, I'll go visit three or four. If they don't come, I ain't worrying about it. I'll... Listen! Listen! Who cares if sinners go to hell? Who cares? It's easy to get backslid. It's easy to get backslid in the work of the Lord and just say, oh, I'm doing pretty good to get myself there, Lord. I'll show you. But I'm telling you, rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Listen, we are in rescue mission work. And when the Titanic, anything goes down, if a man's saved, his mind ought to be, get somebody else saved. I hope you'll care. I said one time, this guy was going to commit suicide. Had done decided. Done had done decided. He's gonna go to the river and drown himself. When he got down there he heard somebody singing way off in the distance, he thought, I hear somebody singing. That's a weird kind of sound. And they can tell there's a different kind of sound to real Christian singing. I mean we took some of you know, they went to New York City with us. We took a hundred kids in New York City and sung right in the middle of Times Square. And you'd think Times Square nobody wouldn't even, but there was people stopping coming to the doors. They had never heard a hillbilly twang like that in the middle of Times Square. And, buddy, there was people standing out there, and I think somebody led a cop to the Lord, uh, one of the uh, New York City cop. And I'm telling you, they knew there was a different sound coming out of that group. And that old boy heard that sound, and he went down there, and he went down there, and they was singing Christian songs, and they was having church in this house. And he listened and went in and got saved because them people cared. If you'll remember, back before you got saved, somebody cared about you. Somebody cared about you. If you'll think back now, your cousin, somebody in your family, somebody paid a price somewhere that resulted in your salvation. They did mine. There's an old lady up there in Nebo fasted six days. And God sent revival to Nebo. Now, and that's when I got saved. Somebody cared, and it resulted in my salvation. If you'll think back, somebody, you might not even know who it was, somebody paid some price somewhere that you could hear the gospel and be saved. Now let's do that same thing for them. I don't know I have to beg for bus drivers, bus workers. Lord, help people. We ought to care. We ought to care. We're living in a day of don't care. Most churches don't even have church on Sunday night. And the truth is, some of y'all sitting here tonight say, well, I wish we didn't. That shows how far your heart is from God. Lord have mercy. You're pitiful. You're pitiful. I'm telling you tonight, people. Hey, listen, we need all the help we can get. We don't need to be backing off for heaven's sake. We need God. Something's going to happen that will change your mind. Mark my word.
Let's help us tonight. Let's help tonight. Who cares? Who cares? I'm going to stop right there. Let's stand by our heads for prayer.